Welcome back, y'all, to Searching for Faith. If you're new here, I'm Tracy. I'm so glad that you found my channel. Um, and if you are a returning subscriber, you guys mean the world to me. I'm so, so thankful for you. I normally do this at the end of the video, but if you are a returning viewer or a first-time viewer, we do post Bible study-related content, long-form videos, every Sunday at... 3 p.m. Eastern. So if you would like to follow along with me on my personal spiritual journey to discover who God is and what I believe, then I would love for you to go ahead and hit that subscribe button and have you join us on this journey. So today's Bible study video is that we are going to be doing a method of Bible study. Today we're going to be doing the clue method. Now, I came up with my own because I felt like the ones, like I tried here, H-E-A-R, I tried, um, what are the others? I'm trying to remember what the others are right now. I tried here, which is um, highlight, evaluate, application, and reflection, I think, is what here is. And then, like, what are the others? Also, if you guys didn't know, I do have a Patreon. Right now, we only have one tier. It is a dollar a month. You can also join for free and see updates and things from me if you want. Um, but for the dollar tier, uh, right now, you get access to my monthly wallpapers. So I will show you, like right now we're on July. So this is what my wallpaper for July looks like. This is the home screen for July. We did a star theme. We also have a monthly, um, let me just see if I can pull it up on Canva for you guys to show you real quick. But I'll also put it on the screen right here. We also have a monthly verse that we are memorizing together. Okay, yes, so here is our July one. So our monthly memorization verse, and it usually ties into the theme of that month's wallpapers, but it's Psalm 147.4. He determines the number of the stars and calls them each by name. So we did this really fun star theme, which I thought would be perfect for a summer um, theme, kind of a little bit. Uh, if you're in the U.S., we did go with, like, a blue kind of starry theme. I think maybe, like, camping, night sky, that kind of thing. Um, so this was the desktop wallpaper. Um, so I give you room to put folders. I'll show you what it looks like on my desktop right now. Um, the month view and your verse memorization. So right now, August is already up on my Patreon. I usually put it up about halfway through. Um, so this is our August wallpaper. Our verse memorization for the month of August is, I can do all this through him who gives me strength, Philippians 4, 13, because I start back work as a teacher. So I did go with a, uh, normally I see back to school themes in September for printables, but I go with August because that's when school starts for us. Our students literally start on August 1st, and I just realized I made a mistake on this. I did not notice that, y'all. Oh my gosh. I'll fix this and re-upload this. I wonder if you guys have noticed that. <laughs> Forgive me. I'm human. Um, but yeah, and then I gave a little, like, just message here. Your strength is in Christ. Um, and then we have a section on this one. We have a section for folders. I have a Mac, so I can do, like, a, um, like a notepad thing. I can't remember if you can do notepad, like a sticky note kind of things, um, if that's an app on a Windows computer or not. But I can do like a little sticky note so I can add my little sticky note with like a to-do list or notes in this little section. So every single one's gonna look a little bit different. Um, but like I said, I will show you, and hopefully I've already done it, but I'll show you guys what, so we do eight 
phone wallpaper and a uh, iPad wallpaper. Um, and then what I usually do is that wallpaper for the phone and for my iPad are both my lock screen like this, but it's also serves as the background on my, cause I have an iPad and an iPhone, of course. Um, and then I also, I have the Widget Smith app. So I use the Widget Smith app to make like little, um, widgets that like match for the month. Um, this is just a, uh, Pinterest board. So I make little aesthetic Pinterest boards. So I have a summer Pinterest board aesthetic, and then it rotates through all the things that I've pinned on that Pinterest board. So that's what this is. Like when you click on it and you go to edit, edit widget, it goes to my thing. So I could look for, I could change it. Like I could do, oops, I could change it and I could do, um, my fall iOS aesthetic, a rainy day iOS aesthetic, or maybe let's say I wanted to see my Bible journaling um, inspiration photos, then I could change it to that. So right now I just have it on the summer iOS aesthetic, but you could change it to whatever Pinterest board you want, but that's like a widget. Um, I, I do that on my phone and my iPad just for fun. And then this, this widget scrolls through my photos. So that's a photo widget that just scrolls through all the photos that are on my um, iPad. And then I always make sure that the month kind of somewhat goes with the theme. I usually have a weather um, widget as well. And then a widget that tells me big the day, date, and time. Technically, that's like up here in this corner, but it just makes it easier for me to be able to see it really bold and know right away. Um, so just to kind of give you guys like an idea of like how I make it look the way I want it to look. I change my wallpapers and aesthetic every single month and I will be uploading, uploading the about mid month for the following months. Like I said, August is already on there. Um, you're probably actually seeing this video probably like the first weekend in August. So if you are, go check out the August theme. If you don't love the August theme, I also for free members mid month, I make the previous month's theme available to all for free. So, uh, but if you would like to have the same aesthetic and wallpaper as me for the next month, um, then like I said, it's just a dollar a month. And then also any downloadable or printables that I make, I also upload onto my Patreon and you can download those on that $1 tier. So you would have access to the clue method. And what we're going to be doing next week is the climb method. I'm giving a little sneak peek there um but both of them are available right now on my patreon at that dollar tier okay so back to what i was actually doing i know i was having an adhd squirrel moment i apologize you guys okay so let's go to etsy and i'm going to search bible study guide could also search method maybe i should do that Ooh, Amy centers on our um, method. Let's try that. Um, I also have an Etsy storefront, and I'm probably going to put the clue and the climb on the Etsy storefront. Um, but I think they're going to be a dollar a piece on the Etsy storefront. Um, so just heads up on that. Like, if you're like, I don't really want to join your Patreon, but I really love that clue method. I think I'm gonna put it on my Etsy storefront and I will link that below. My Etsy store is called November Lily Designs. Um, I've had it for a while. I used to do other things on it. Um, I'm planning on adding more. I have lots of ideas for new um, products that would help with Bible study. Um, so definitely stay tuned for all of that. Okay, so let's see. Yeah, so you have here method right here which is highlight explain apply and respond um and then oh she's got a bunch on here so this um etsy shop is called victoria tiffany soap that was one of the ones i was forgetting so you also have the soap method um scripture 
So just choose a scripture or passage, read the verse or verses, observation, application, and prayer is the SOAP method. Let's see, does she have other methods? All right, you also have ACTS method, which is adoration, confession, thanksgiving, and supplication. This is a method for prayer, not Bible study. All right. And then it looks like the last myth that she has on her page is REAP. And this is a Bible study page. Read and record, examine, apply, pray. So one of the things that I recently learned about my personal spiritual walk and desire to um, dive into reading the word in more detail, really getting meat out of what I'm reading, really getting something um, deep and meaningful for myself, was that a lot of the methods were more surface level that I was finding. Like it was like read the scripture, um, reflect on it, how does it apply to your life? And that was kind of it. Um, so I wanted methods that encouraged someone to really dig deeper. So Clue and Climb both are digging deeper. And the other aspect that I wanted to include in my Bible study methods are a layer of um, looking at God. Because that was something I think this is, I learned this when I read um, Becoming Free Indeed um, by, uh, it's Ginger, right? Gin, uh, not Ginger Duggar. Um, I'm trying to remember her new name. I'm blanking on her last name right now, but I'll put it right here. But you guys know what I'm talking about. Um, was that we need to read the Bible. A lot of times we're reading the Bible in a very me-centric way. Um, what is this passage saying to me? How does this passage apply to me? What is the modern day application? And sometimes a verse is not going to have a modern day application. And it's not about us. It's about God. We are reading God's story. And I really wanted a method that would encourage the reader to evaluate and meditate on what that passage is saying about God. How does that passage reflect God's character, reflect God's glory? What does that say about God? So that was why I developed my two methods. So this week, we're going to be doing the clue method, which is only four letters. The first letter, C, is for context, um, and which is also very important. I found a lot of Bible study acronym methods that I found don't tell you to find out the context. And so I try to keep it as simple and least amount of words as possible, but also understandable. Um, so context, super simple, when, where, who. So when is the story taking place? Where is it taking place? And who is the story about? Um, the second letter in Clue is L, and that is for learn. What lessons are taken from this passage? What do I know now that I didn't before? So pretty straightforward. Just reading the passage as a whole. What, it kind of could be the application one, but what have I learned from this? Um, what do, what is something new that I have, a new insight, a new fact, a new information that I have gathered from this reading that I may not have known previously? And that's also something that you're going to learn when you're looking at your study Bibles and your commentaries. You may learn something new or see a new insight that you hadn't before in that passage. The third letter in Clue, of course, is U, and that is for uncover. And uncover is where, what else, like, where do I need to go deeper? So what do I need to research further? Do I need to look up the definition to any words? Like maybe I need to do a word study or a verse study. Are there connecting verses I need to read? So oftentimes in your um, study Bible, for instance, there will be a note and it usually has a connecting verse. 
So I will make a note of where, what do I need to do further? What other verses that connect to this? And then sometimes like maybe you'll have like first and second Samuel and first and second Chronicles where it's literally the same story. Like me and my sister were just talking recently about <laughs> David and how this is something we commonly hear, but people saying that David danced naked before the Lord and that we need to be like free and and fearless like David. But when you really read it, like David wasn't actually naked. So I'm like, why do we all say he was naked? Um, and understanding whether he's naked or not also like helps you understand better like why Michael like was feeling the way that she, like what was her intention of the thoughts that she was having in that moment. Um, it changes all of that when you read it in more detail. So maybe when you read a verse in like, Samuel, you need to go back and read that same story because it like they parallel each other, like they're telling the same stories, um, just from different like writers or time periods. Um, and so maybe when you read the same story about David in I don't know where it's at, I'm gonna just say Second Samuel, and then you go back and you read that same story in Chronicles, um, the wording's gonna be different how it's described that he is dressed is different. Um, and so you may, you may have like a parallel story they need to read where the same story about David in this book is also stored, told um, from a different point of view or from a different author in another book and you need to compare the two. Um, and then also sometimes maybe, like a lot of times in the New Testament, there will be verses where they're literally quoting scripture from the Old Testament. So go back and read that passage in the Old Testament. Um, so that's just what that means for uncover. Okay, so the E in clue is for evaluate. So evaluate is where we dig into who God is and what the verse is saying about God. So what does this passage say about God or his character? How does this reflect God's glory? Is there a modern day application? So I put it like as like a question mark here um, because sometimes there's not a modern day application. Sometimes what we're gathering from it is understanding you know, the people of the Old Testament are understanding something about who God was during that time. But I'm sorry, if you're reading the genealogies, you know, or something, or reading, you know, a story from the Old Testament, sometimes you really are just learning about that person from the past and yes, maybe you can reflect on it and come up with a modern day application, but sometimes coming up with a modern day application is a stretch. And by forcing yourself to come up with a modern application, sometimes you could misinterpret scripture, pull scripture out of context to make a way to have a modern day application. So I think it's good for us to understand that sometimes you may read a scripture and the application is that you know God better, you know God deeper, you understand him on a deeper level, you have grown closer to him, you're able to worship him in a new way. Um, you understand the history of God's people better. Like it just, the application for today is that this has enlightened you and, um, strength strengthened your walk with God as a Christian that may be the only modern day application and that's okay so I just don't want you to be like hmm how does this story <laughs> you know or this list of genealogies how can I make that apply to me today like I feel like if we like put too much emphasis on that that's when we um interpret incorrectly or interpret in, in, inappropriately um, because we're like trying to force a modern day application on every passage and that's just not going to happen. So we're going to go through the clue method. So right now I am doing the Ruth study from Daily Grace Co. Um, I just finished week one. It took me about two weeks. I am not going like, like, I'm not doing it every day like like maybe you're supposed to I'm doing it more like every like three days um so what we're gonna do is uh because I just finished I think here let's see what what passage 
was um so week one was passage Ruth 1, 1 through 18. So I thought since I just finished that week, we could do Ruth 1, 1 through 18 using our clue method. So let's get started. Okay, so first things first, I'm gonna put my Bible over here. So I have my study Bibles. I am going to paste this method into my resource page. And depending on the size of your planner uh, or notebook that you're using, this is an eight and a half by 11. So you're just using like a standard uh, binder. You could easily just hole punch this and put it in your binder. Um, but my journal is a little bit smaller than that. Um, so I'm cutting it down a little. I may have to cut off edges of this one a little bit, but we'll try. Um, but you could also, if you have a smaller planner, like if you have like an 85 or uh, even smaller than that, all you really need to do is just print it smaller. And I could have done that for these, but I just printed them eight and a half by 11, which is fine. Um, and I don't mind that. Um, but if you don't want to cut off like the graphics on the edges, um, all you have to do is just when you're printing, you just have to um, like reduce the size when you print. So print like, you know, 75% or 50% and it'll shrink it onto the page. Also, if you're doing like A5, you can also just do two to a page um, and then it'll literally print it like half page size and that's usually fine for A5 size. Like most, like if you're using like a blank bullet journal notebook, most of those notebooks are going to be um, A5 size. Um, but you can get them all different sizes. Like I know like the Lecterm notebooks, you can get in B5, you can get A5. Um, I'm, if you haven't seen my setup of this Bible journal notebook, I will link it below. Um, or maybe I just did a flip through. I can't remember if I did a setup for this or not. Um, but this is just an art journal that I got at, I think, Michael's. And it was super, super cheap. It is just artist loft, I think. Yeah, it's artist loft. Okay. So, we have our two methods in here. But like I said, today we are going to do the clue method. All right, so I'm going to turn a page. And we will start our Ruth 1, 1 through 18 here. All right, if you saw my travel notebook, then you know that I did my Ruth study in this notebook for travel purposes. So, this is what I've done for Ruth so far um, doing the roof study. I'm gonna set that to the side because we're gonna use those printables later. Um, but I do like to decorate my pages. So for Ruth, um, I picked because she is, they're in a foreign land and she's following Naomi into a new land. I have this like giant um, uh, map sticker it's like a really wide one i also have this like uh they're like hedgehogs camping so there's like mountains and trees and stuff and then i got these hearts because ruth's heart you know she like clings to naomi um and her love for god and all of those things so we're gonna use this washi tape to decorate a couple of pages real quick because i love to decorate pages so I'm just gonna like tear it like not prettily and stick it in both corners and then I'm gonna take this other washi and we're just gonna layer it nothing crazy exciting it's probably gonna look a little silly but like I said it's all about love and sacrifice 
and leaving your homeland and all the things. So that's how we're, we're decorating our pages they, for Naomi and Ruth's story. But yes, these are hedgehogs. I'll try to do like a zoom in for you guys of what this looks like. These are hedgehogs camping. And I can't remember where I got this washi tape. I really, it's not Simply Gilded where I normally get washi tape. I'm pretty sure this thick washi tape was like, I don't buy from AliExpress anymore um, or Shein, but I kind of think it might have been like an AliExpress. I don't think it was Stationery Pal. Um, like this big map washi, but the hearts are simply gilded. I really can't remember. Uh, there's a couple of shops, sticker shops I used to buy a lot of stickers from. One was called Creating & Co. and one was Cricut Paper Co. Um... And they sometimes do washi tapes. I don't think this is their style. I'm not really sure. There's also a company called Oh Hello um, that I don't think they have an online shop anymore because they've kind of switched gears of what they were selling. They kind of became just a gift shop and they have storefronts now. But I used to do their subscription box and I was wondering if that came in the subscription box. I really have no idea. I really have no idea where that's from. Um, and I'm sure it's probably not available anymore, but the, like I said, the point is that we are going with a travel, um, kind of, you know, leaving your homeland kind of theme for our, uh, study. Okay. So I think what I'm going to do is I also pulled out two highlighters. I have my mild liner brown and my Mr. Pen green. I think I'm gonna write in green. Roof. One, one through 18, right here. Okay. So, first things first. Let's open up to Roof. And the first thing to do is to read 1, 1 through 18 again. Here I stand, I fall before you and I lift my hands and I surrender everything I am. I call you knowing that you... Okay, so I highlighted this first because this is that famous verse from this section um, where Ruth is clinging to Aunt Naomi and refusing to leave her and she says, for where you go I will go and where you lodge I will lodge your people shall be my people and your God my God where you die I will die and there I will be buried. May the Lord do so to me and more also if anything but death parts me from you I'm going to write this in my notebook Now we are going to do our Bible study method. Okay, so I'm gonna write in all caps right here. Okay, so first one, C. Context. All right, so I have a couple of printables. I also have, I can pull it up on my iPad. I think I have it printed somewhere. I just haven't um, pasted it in anywhere. But I have the two printables from Amy Center. 
Um, and so I'm going to read these and then I'm also going to look at my how to faith a life one as well. And then we're also going to look at what the Bible says about the context. So here, Amy Centers Prendival says, um, it's 1290 BC during the book of Judges. Um, let's see. That's like the timeline right here or like the Naomi and her husband, um, and then it doesn't have their names here, but she's just showing like how she's connected to them. Um, Ruth, who is a Moabite, marries into Israelite family. Um, the men in the family die from famine and women are left to fend for themselves. Um, at this time, women couldn't own property. So if the men in your family died, it was a death sentence. Um, Naomi wants to return to Bethlehem. Orpah returns to her family, but Ruth wants to stay with Naomi. Um, so here's the backstories. This is some of the good context information that we need. Israelites freed from Egypt. They entered the promised land. Enter Mary with Moabites, Ruth and Orpah, and then Naomi returns to Bethlehem. So I think what I, um, what it said is in the days when the judges ruled, there were, there was a famine in the land and a man of Bethlehem and Judah went to sojourn in the country of Moab. So, uh, uh. It just says a man. It doesn't say his name. I just realized. Yeah. Um, but uh, Naomi's husband, they live in the promised land. And there's like a little map right here. Um, but they live in the promised land. But there's a famine in the promised land. So they have left the promised land to go to Moab. Um, and that's where her sons marry Moabite women, Orpah and Ruth survive off leftovers from barley harvest in Bethlehem. That's what happens with Naomi and Ruth. Okay, so that's getting into the rest of the story. Um, let's look at, um, I'm going to pull up, I have it in my Good Notes app. I have a religion folder, which I've told you guys before. Let's go into our religion folder. I still need to do a video on digital tools. Um, I have like a whole How to Faith a Life folder here. Um, here's the cliff notes. Okay, so let's try to find. Okay, that's Esther, so we need to go back here. Let me try to go here. This will help. All right, Judges, Ruth, here we go. I need to go backwards, not forwards. Okay, so, um, Ruth, historical narrative with theological implications. Although the book is named Ruth, Ruth is not the main character. Pay attention to Naomi. It's around 1100 BC. Um, I find that interesting. So how to faith the life, there's some contradictions already in the information. This is this happens when you're studying. How to faith the life says it's around 1100 BC. Uh, Amy Center says it's exactly 1290 BC. Um, so let's look at a couple of other sources before we decide what year it is. Um, let's see. So there's not as much context given on how to faith a life's printable. And I actually want to email her and ask a question because her says a different year. Um, so let's look at other intros of the Bible to get some more context. Uh, study Bibles. So let's find Ruth. All right. So what does it say? At the beginning of Ruth. Oh, there's no turning back around looking at your All right, here's some context. Although the story is set in the days when the judges ruled, circa 1200 to 1025 BCE, Ruth is saying it's about 12 night. Um, Ruth, uh, Amy Center's saying it's about uh, it's 1290 BC, but in here it's saying 1200 to 1025, which would be more in line with what How to Faith the Life said that it's around like the 1100s. Um, let's see. The date of Ruth's composition remains unresolved. 
On the one hand, a date during the monarchy is suggested by the book's obvious interest in celebrating the ancestry of King David, whose descendants continued to rule until the Babylonian capture of Jerusalem in 586 BCE. Equally pronounced, however, are the story's frequent reminders that its heroine is not an Israelite. Indeed, the storyteller suggests that the story's frequent, um, that Boaz's gracious treatment of Ruth the Moabite is unusual as well as exemplary. This insistence on an inclusive attitude towards foreigners suggests to many scholars a date of composition in the 5th century BCE, when the issue of intermarriage between Israelites and non-Israelites had become extremely controversial. Um, let's see, Nehemiah and Ezra. Whatever its date, however, Ruth is not a polemical book. I don't know what that word means. Polemical? I don't think that would be in my Bible dictionary. I might need to look that up somewhere else, but let's see. Polemical. Yeah, I'm not sure. I'd have to, I'll need to like Google what that means. The values it proclaims, loyalty, love of family, and generosity towards strangers are universal and timeless. Okay. So let's look in my apologetic study Bible before we look at the Enduring Word Commentary. Yeah, I'm still in Psalms. Okay. I really need to get back on my Psalm study. I'm so behind, y'all. Okay. Now, right, let's see what... Oh, okay. Because it's taking place during the time of the Judges. All right, the books of Judges and Ruth are treated together because the events of the book of Ruth took place during the time of the Judges. Both books face challenges to their authenticity regarding matters of authorship. The dating of their writings, the, op the possible addition of non-original material by later authors, and the purposes for their having been written. Although neither book identifies the, its author, Jewish tradition declares the prophet of Samuel to have authored both books. Challenges to this view are at least threefold. One, the books refer to the times of the judges as having taken place in distant memory. The books take the time to explain past custom or, or events. And three, the text says, in those days there was no king in Israel, seemingly writing from the perspective of a time when Israel had a king, and Samuel died before David reigned as king. Those who reject their traditional view of Samuel as author typically favor as the author either King Solomon or an anonymous person who wrote the books during David's reign. All right, and then this is giving counter arguments, supporting Samuel. Um, let's see. Controversy surrounds the books of Judges and Ruth. Even a cursory reading of these books causes many to question the validity of their inclusion in the scripture. The content being deemed by some as unworthy of God or of little or no value to 21st century readers. That's sad because I feel like, like Ruth is like one of my favorite books. Like I feel like... Especially, I don't know if it's because I'm a woman, but as a woman, like, like the emotion in it, just like it, it's, it's, it's one of my favorite books of the Bible, if not my favorite. These books include one graphic depiction of, the graphic depictions of violence, such as the slaughter of seemingly innocent people by the command of God, maiming, human sacrifice, and gloating over the deaths of other, of one's enemies. Yeah, that's pretty, that's pretty hard pill to swallow. Heroes who are anything but role models, while seemingly under the control of the Holy Spirit, they engage in deceit, lies, mockery, and self-centered behavior. Three, illicit sex and sexual innuendo. Four, a degrading depiction of women. And five, a writing style that seemingly includes exaggeration or fabrication. The inclusion of certain statements at the end of each of the books dramatically alters how we are to understand the purpose of each book and judges. And judges, the author, declared that in the times about which he was writing, there was no king in Israel. And Ruth, the author, presented genealog genealogical records that include the name of King David, a king who lived during the post-judges era. Thus, the, the name of, thus, rather than being merely guidelines for how to live during difficult times, both books appear to be defending one of two views. One, living during the present age of the kings was better than living in the previous age of the judges. Or two, despite coming from an insignificant non-royal family, David had an excellent heritage arising from godly grandparents of the family in the Messianic line. 
Regarding the controversial matters of the content, a closer reading of the text reveals that by being written as straightforward accounts, the books display a higher degree of credibility than if they presented, presented sanitized histories. Neither book, neither book attempts to gloss over any of the sins, foolishness, or errors of the people described in them. Despite conclusions skeptics might draw from a cursory assessment of the text, the books themselves never place blame for sin, foolishness, or error on God. God was not guilty, and the so-called innocent were, in fact, not innocent at all. Instead, they deserved judgment. Hmm. Okay. It's not giving me any info about, like, the date. Um, but last thing for context is that we are going to look at... I'm going to go to... All right. So, we're going to go to the commentary... English. We're going to Ruth. All right, let's see. Background, Elimelech and his sons. Now it came to pass in the days when the judges ruled that there was a famine in the land, and a certain man in Bethlehem, Judah, went to dwell in the country of Moab, he and his wife and his two sons. Um, this account begins in the closing days of the judges, a 400-year period of general anarchy and oppression when the Israelites were not ruled by kings but by periodic deliverers whom God raised up and the nation sought him again. Notable among the judges were Gideon, Samson, and Deborah. Each of these were raised up by God not to rule as kings but to lead Israel during a specific challenge and then go back to obscurity. The days when the judges ruled were actually dark days for Israel. The period was characterized by the phrase, everyone did what was right in his own eyes. Uh, God specifically promised there would always be plenty in the land if Israel was obedient. Therefore, a famine in the land meant that Israel as a nation was not obedient unto the Lord. Okay, so it's not really giving any dates. So what we're going to do is I'm going to use... Um, so here I'm going to put when... I'm going to put uh, basically what um, my uh, So that's kind of really all that we know. It's the time of Judges. It's somewhere probably between, like, I'm just going to, I'm going to put this in air quotes because we really don't, like, not air quotes. I'm going to put that in between quotes because we really don't know. It's it's like, it's a, a maybe. <laughs> I'm going to put a question mark there, okay? Um, so between 1200 and 100 B.C., during the time of the judges, a period of 400 years where Israel had no king, and I'm, I'm putting in parentheses, general anarchy and oppression, there was a famine in the land. So that's kind of what we know, right? Okay, so, um, where... So that is our context when where who all right so when is I already read that part where begins in Bethlehem Israel and family moves to Moab, to the east of Israel, promised land. Then Naomi and Ruth return to Bethlehem. The who is Naomi and her husband, Elimelech, and their two sons, Malon and Chilion, and their Moabite wives, Ruth and Orpah. And Boaz, when they return to Bethlehem. 
Okay, so now we are on, so we finished our C. Now we're gonna do learn. So, L, learn. Okay, so, the L is what lessons are taken from this passage? What do I know now that I didn't before? Okay. So, let's look at our commentaries in our study Bibles. Okay, so this part, the learn part, is where I dive in and do the, like, actual Bible study. So, we are definitely going to do a speed through of this part, or this video will end up being, like, two hours long. So, we're going to do some speed through.
Okay, so what have I learned? What lessons can I take from the passage? What do I know now that I didn't before? Okay. So I'm just gonna write a paragraph here. read that one more time. So Moab, so what I learned, Moab is to the east of Israel. The Moabites and Israelites did not get along. The famine was widespread and most likely affected all of Israel. Naomi blesses or asks for blessings for her daughters and daughters-in-law. <laughs> she refers to Hesed or the covenant relationship. So in a sense, she's asking for God to bless Ruth and Orpah in the same way he promised to bless the Israelites. A woman's security in these times was not guaranteed. It's just super scary. Naomi felt the destructive hand of God, but she still had faith in his promises. And Ruth, by vowing to stay with Naomi till death, shows her faith in the God of Israel. All right, so now we're going to do the you. Uh, oh, wait, one cover. I already wrote the you. <laughs> All right, so what do I need to research further? Do I need to look up the definition to any words? Are there connecting verses I need to read? Okay, so I feel like it did mention a couple of things specifically. My apologetic Bible was like, had nothing on 1 through 18. It was not helpful at all. Okay. So there's lots and lots of connecting verses here. Oh, I wanted to read all of the uh, blessings. So I'm gonna write blessings in Ruth um, are two four two twelve. 2, 19 through 20, 3, 10, 4, 11 through 12, and 4, 14. Also, let me put 1, 8, and 9. Okay, so I want to look at those, and then I also wanted to look at these verses when it was talking about um, Naomi's experience. So, um, hand of God. I want to read at some point these verses. So Exodus 9, 15, 1 Samuel 5, Nine, destruction. And then um, Deuteronomy 621, rescues. And Ecclesiastes 224 brings joy. I wanted to look up all of that later. Okay, so last part is the E. Evaluate. Okay, 
So, what does this pastor say about God or his character? How does this reflect God's glory? Is there a modern day application? Okay, so what does this say about God's character? All right. Reaching me when I run the other direction, I'm undone. Unraveling my plans, make me whole again, rebuild me from the inside out in a way only you know. I can't remember what I was going to say. Okay, um, is there a modern day application? So, um, I mean, the only thing that the main, I think, reflection of these verses, I believe, is probably to have faith in God, um, remember his promises, and follow him. Stay true to God. Remember his promises and follow him. Okay. All right. So that is let me see if anything that I wrote here would help. Let's see. Um, I'm going to write this part right here. So these are the two things. This was my reflection at the end of 1 through 18. And I said, how does it point to the gospel? And I said, Ruth is part of Jesus's line. It feels like having Ruth, a non-Israelite, adopted into Judaism, be an ancestor in Jesus' family tree, points to the acceptance of Gentiles into the kingdom. Um... And then this, this is what I'm going to write down at the bottom of my page. But run to God and not let go. Have faith even in times of famines. I'm going to write that right here. Have faith. Even in times of famine. I'm going to put a little line around that. Okay. All right. So let me see. Make sure y'all can see all of this. All right. So this is our clue method. So this is for Ruth 1, 1 through 18. I, the key verse I kind of highlighted at the top of my study here. Um, we did context, telling when, where, and who. We did our learn where we did our study of the actual text and then wrote down the things that we learned from that study. Uncover, these are things that I would like to read. I'm not gonna read right now, but I would like to read at some point that are connected to this. Um, and then evaluate. Um, so we said God blesses, this is like, what does this say about God? God blesses, God keeps his promises. Although there may be judgment, he also rescues and brings joy. God protects, God strengthens. He accepts those who come to him, even the outsiders. So we, this is our application. If we want to, you know, to find one is to stay true to God, remember his promises and follow him. God will bring good even from bad. Have faith even in times of famine, uh, which is hard, right? Okay, so that is our clue method of Bible study. Stay tuned next. I don't think, actually, I actually think we're going to skip a week. So the week after next, we're going to do climb. Um, but yeah, so that is our clue method study of Ruth 1 through 1, 1 through 18. Excuse me. Ruth 1, 1 through 18. So I think what we're going to do is when we do climb, it's probably going to be when I finish week two of Ruth. So week two um, will be, let's see. 
uh, will be Ruth 1, 19 through 220 is probably what we'll do. So if you would like to read those verses, Ruth 1, 19 through 220, um, before, within the next two weeks before we do the climb study, feel free to do that and we can do it together. Okay, guys, so I hope you enjoyed this method. Remember that both Clue and Climb are available on my Patreon. You have access to all free printables and downloads for only a dollar a month. Uh, and I'm also going to put these on my Etsy shop. Um, but yeah, so I'll link both below just to be on the safe side. Um, but yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this method. Let me know what method of Bible study you guys like to use. Have you come up with your own version? Is there a specific acronym or study method that you like to use? There's really no wrong method as long as you're digging into scripture and reflecting on it. That's the important thing. Um, so like I said at the beginning of the video, um, we do lots of Bible study content here. Uh, so you're going to see a new long form Bible study video every Sunday at 3 p.m. Eastern. Um, and then I also do some bonus videos. We do some vlogs. We do some giveaways. We do some flip throughs. Um, lots of different things that kind of pop up during the week. Um, so definitely hit that subscribe button if you would like to follow along with us on this journey. If you did like this particular video, if you love Bible study related videos, definitely hit that like button as well. And I wish you guys all the blessings. Uh, don't forget, God has not forgotten you and we are in this together. So please let me know how I can pray for you in the comment section below. And I hope you guys have an amazing week. Uh, so I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.